Now, when it comes to building websites, one of the things that we know we're going to have to do when it comes to most WordPress websites is some level of optimization. That could be something as simple as optimizing the images, right the way up to full optimization with content delivery networks and so much more. Now, there are a range of different tools out there, things like WP Rocket, Perf Matters, and an abundance of other tools, all promising to give you great page load times. And today we're going to be taking a look at one called Rabbit Loader. Now this is on lifetime deal over on AppSumo. So it's up to you if you think this is worth jumping on board. I'm going to give you totally unbiased opinion. We're going to go through, I'm going to see the results before. We're going to see the results after. We're going to take a brief overview. And this is my absolute first look. I haven't seen this. I haven't tested it. I know nothing more about it. So first of all, let's take a quick look at the deal itself. What's included, how much it's going to cost you and the kind of feedback you're going to get. So jumping over into AppSumo, this is the actual product itself. I'll link in the description below. It is an affiliate link, so if you use that, it does give me a little bit of kickback, but it's entirely up to you. If you don't want to use it, no harm done. Okay, so this is what we have. If we scroll through, you can see we've got a video outlining what it does. We've got currently, at the time recording this, 12 reviews, giving it five stars. Now, when it comes to AppSumo, if you've never used this before, or if you haven't bought a couple of things on there, and you maybe have had a mixed bag based upon what you bought, there's one thing I would recommend you do, and that is basically do your due diligence. And what does that mean? It means take a look at the reviews, give it a couple of days so reviews do start to roll in, take a look at the questions that are being asked inside there, and how the developer or developers or the company behind it actually respond to those. And don't, don't, by based upon the promises of what they'll bring. Remember, you're taking a bit of a punt by investing early on in most products. So if we take a quick look, there's currently 12 reviews on here, all giving it basically five stars. Now, there's a couple of things I would recommend. Read the review, read the feedback you get from the developers, but also look at the number of deals that have been bought by that particular person leaving a review. Because sometimes you do get incentivized reviews by the companies behind the product that people are purchasing. So if you see something like deals bought one, well, you can probably take that with a pinch of salt and that's probably being incentivized. But if you're seeing people with 157, 274. These are people that have been buying products on AppSumo and you have a better chance of them being totally legitimate in what they're saying. But once you've got a few kind of reviews on there, you can kind of get a feel for what is good, what is bad, what's problematic, and also getting feedback from the developers themselves. And secondly, like I say, take a look at the questions. You can see there's already 86 questions. Take a look through how active is the developer. Are they just simply copying and pasting their replies? Use all that to gauge whether you want to invest. Okay, so with that being said, let's take a look at the plans and the features. You can see this is included in all plans. It's a WordPress plugin, so it's basically built for WordPress. You've got WooCommerce compatibility, page speed, score booster, above the fold CSS, JavaScript, CSS, Lotus, all those kinds of things. Coming down. You can see this is the base plan, which is what I've bought, which gives me 100 gigabyte of monthly traffic bandwidth. It's not their top tier CDN, so bear that in mind when you're testing it out. You can run this on up to five websites with this plan, 25 page rules and unlimited page views. However, if you jump up to the tier two, this is what I would probably consider to be the sweet spot if you want to use this. That's giving you 250 gigabytes of bandwidth. Now bear in mind that's spread across all of the websites, not just 250 gigabytes per website. However, you do get unlimited pages, page rules, and page views. So that, like I say, is probably the sweet spot. If you want to use this on a more agency-based thing, so for clients, you may want to jump up to one of the higher tiers, and you can go all the way up to tier four, which gives you a terabyte of monthly bandwidth. Now, for this example, I'm using one of the Astra Pro themes and one of the Astra Pro sort of starter sites. As you can see, we've got an e-commerce shop. I wanted to use e-commerce because we've got WooCommerce installed, and that generally tends to be harder on cheaper servers than just a standard blog kind of website. So this will probably give it a harder time and make it work a little bit harder. As you can see, it's quite graphic intense. There's a lot of images going on through here. It's quite a big page. So... This is what we're starting off with. So if we jump over to GT Metrics, let's copy the URL. Jump over to GT Metrics, we'll drop that inside there and we'll hit that to analyze. We'll let that run in the background and we'll jump over to PageSpeed Insights and we'll do the same on there as well and analyze that. Now, before we go any further, let me just quickly say that I am using InstaWP, which is a deal that I picked up on AppSumo a little while back that allows you to very quickly 
spin up copies of WordPress for testing demo purposes and so on. So this isn't going to give you the same level of optimization using something like Cloudways or SiteGround or any of those kind of more fully featured hosting plans. So again, take that for what it's worth. This will probably be harder to optimize than sort of dedicated hosting for long-term websites. So like I say, bear that in mind. So coming back over to GD Metrics, you can see our starting point is not brilliant. We're getting a C across the board with performance being 62%, which is pretty low. Structure isn't too bad. 2.4 seconds. Again, that's not too bad. You could optimize that with better hosting to start off with. And then you can see total block in time and any kind of cumulative shift. However, jump over to page speed insights, you can see we do score pretty poorly on here for mobile. Now, as with all of these, take these as starting points for tools to help you to optimize. Run a couple of tests because things will fluctuate. If we take a look at the desktop score, that's considerably better with an 80. So we've got a lot of work to do to start off with. So let's just jump into the site itself, set up Rabbit Loader, and take a look at what options are there. So I've already gone ahead and installed Rabbit Loader, connected it to my account, but I've done no optimizations on the site whatsoever. In fact, it's actually deactivated. So let's go ahead and activate Rabbit Loader. Now we're going to get a new entry inside our dashboard called Rabbit Loader. So let's go in and take a look inside there. Now it is worth noting that they recommend leaving this up to 24 hours for all the optimizations to go through the CDN and all the other things. So this is something that I'm going to take a look through and I'm going to leave it 24 hours and I'll come back and kind of give you my feedback on the level we start off with today where we can take a look at the original initial optimizations and then what we get after leaving it 24 hours to see if there's much of a difference there. Okay, so what do we have? Across the top, we've got a range of different tabs with different information. You can see the hot URL cache, any image compression, CSS reduction, and we can purge the cache. Things you're probably used to anyway. You can see it gives us information about the average score, the quota, how much of our T of use, which is that storage, the 100 gigabytes in this example, but higher on higher plans. If you go to URL performance, this is going to give us information about how good our various different pages and so on. As you can see, these are being queued for desktop and mobile. Coming to images, you can see this is where we can find out any images, the total number of images and so on. Critical CSS. Again, you can see this is telling us what CSS is inside you for the different pages. You can tell us the status, the original size, the optimized size, the number of pages, the original CSS, the optimized CSS size, and the improvement overall, and the average render time optimization. CDN usage, this is going to tell us how much of that sort of storage space that we've got available, how much we are using, you know, that kind of information. So you can see currently we've got nothing, but we've just literally installed everything. So a lot of this is going to be a case of you're going to have to wait to see what happens before you kind of see what benefits you get. The nice thing is it does tell us when this is going to reset. So this 100 gigabyte is per month, which will reset the beginning of every single month. So we can see exactly when that's due. So 28th is when I bought this. So it'll refresh on the 28th. Demographs or demographics, I should say. So this will tell us where we're getting it sort of content pulled from, so where the CDN is working and where people are kind of finding information. Now, this is a demo site, so I'm not going to see much information on here, but if you've got a live site, you should start to see this populate over the next 30 days and give you more information about it. Coming into the settings, which is probably where we're going to come into to make tweaks and adjustments to what we've got set up, you can see we can go ahead and exclude things. Now, there's not a lot inside you. So you can tell us this, it's connected to the Rabbit Loader service. You can see we can things like set a general settings. So we can instant content changes crucial for my visitors. Uh, turn on me mode to do testing of resolving conflicts. So again, if you're having problems, you can turn that on and you can see exactly what's going on. You can exclude URLs if you want to. So if you want specific URLs going to be ignored, like maybe you want to ignore the dashboard, you can do that. You can ignore parameters. So if you are passing various different parameters, you could be using UTM, things like that. You can set up what you want to ignore inside there as well. So pretty minimal. You've also got your page rules, your set origins, and your purge log. So if we come into our page rules, this will kind of take us over. We've got to sign in with our accounts. We'll sign in there. So what this has done now is this has taken us over to the Rabbit Loader website itself. So you can see we get a dashboard on their side of things, which allows us to manage the sites, and also a dashboard on our actual website itself. We've got a nice little walkthrough that tells us how to use all this, but we're going to do typical man fashion, and we're going to basically ignore all of that. So let's have a look what we have. 
Obviously, this is going to give us some similar information that we have on the website itself. So you can see our page speed score information that tells us all the links that they queued, whether they're mobile desktop, when they were detected and so on. We're going to get our page speed, asset served and bandwidth information. So this is coming from the CDN side of things. We've got reports inside here. So again, this is kind of giving you information about the various different optimizations that are going on. We've got settings, actions and so on. Image optimizations. Let's open this up. You can see this is giving us, again, the same kind of warning. It takes up to an hour to kind of go through. Coming to settings, you can see we can have Cloudflare integration if you want to connect this up. We can delegate access, manage origins, our page rules. So if we come into our page rules, for example, this is where we can set things up inside here as well. So we can add new rules. So you can see the site pattern, content type, whether it's static, in other words, like a page that doesn't change very often. Semi-dynamic could be something like the home page that has some static images, and then you've got some product pages, and then fully dynamic, which would be everything is being generated from the database every single time the page loads. So things like magazine sites, things that are updated incredibly regularly. Again, you can set up different rules inside here. So we'll say this is, say, semi-dynamic. We're coming to next, so we can turn on CSS optimizations and JavaScript. So again, like I say, if you are having issues with your site not loading, this gives you the ability to handle that and turn those JavaScript sort of optimizations on or off at this point. Again, things like lazy load. So you can kind of see, you're just going to kind of step through and choose how you want to handle the minification, the optimizations and things like that if you're having problems. And this help documentation, which I always like to see whenever you're kind of going through things. And this gives you full overview of how to use all the page rules. So it's nice to see that we've got comprehensive help on all these different options. It would be nice to see that we have live help if there's a problem. So you have the little pop-up. You can sort of ask your questions from there. So, okay, let's come back out of that. And let's just say we'll leave that. You've also got your actions. So you can purge your cache and you've got your help, which will give you your dashboard tour again. So if you skip that like I just did, you could start fresh and go through that again if you wanted to. Or you can dig into the knowledge-based documentation and you can come into the contact us and you can see we can copy the email. So the, it seems to be this only email uh, help at this point in time, which is a little disappointing. It would be nice to have live help, especially if it starts to take off in the same way that it, a lot of tools do over on AppSumo. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this for 24 hours to let it do its work. And then I'm going to come back, check everything is kind of optimized. And then we're going to run through and take a look at what changes we made using GT Metrics and Google PageSpeed Insights one more time to see what we're getting from Rabbit Loader. So we'll come back in a little bit. So I'm back 24 hours later, and you can tell this because I have a different T-shirt on. So we're back 24 hours later, and I've let kind of rabbit loader do its thing in the background. I've come back to take a look at this. So we're going to take a look at the back end of the actual website itself, and also see how that kind of compares to the rabbit loader dashboard. And then we'll run a couple of tests, and I'll give you my final conclusions on what we're seeing. Okay, so if we take a look back into the dashboard of the website we're testing this on, you can see this is giving us some overview now. You can see it's actually now starting to output some of the data that we weren't seeing at the beginning. So this is giving us the best page speed score of a 99, which is nice to hear, but we'll take that with a grain of salt. You can see average score is a 94 out of 100. Now it doesn't tell me what this is testing on, but I'm assuming this is probably going to be Google PageSpeed Insights because it looks very similar. We can come in and take a look at some of the other sections if we want to, and this will give us, as we saw last time, probably more information, but as opposed to being kind of queued up to be optimized, it's all been optimized. So again, we're seeing some basic information inside you. Jumping into images, this is telling us some basic info about the images, how much they've been compressed, examples, and so on. CDN usage, which is something you're probably going to want to keep a little bit of an eye on. You can see this tells us what plan we're on, which is always nice to see. It tells us how much we've used, how much we have left, when it renews. You know, so we get a visual representation of this now. And if this is a real website, we probably see that fluctuating quite a lot as more visitors come on board and so on. So that's pretty cool. I like to see that. Let's hop over into the actual Rabbit Loader dashboard itself, and you can see we're getting a very similar set of statistics, but probably a little bit more streamlined. And we can dig down if we want to and find out more, the CSS optimizations, image, page rules, those kinds of things. So we've seen all of this. The most important thing, though, is what results do we actually get when we run the tests? So let's hop over to GT Metrics and Google PageSpeed Insights, run those tests, and see what we're coming back with. 
So starting off with GT Metrics, let's go ahead and analyze this. Now I'm setting this to be based in London. I don't really know where the servers on this particular hosting account with InstaWP are actually located. So this is probably gonna be emulating what it would be like for me as a user using servers that could be in a different country. So let's run that based upon the UK. We'll analyze this. We'll let that go ahead and run through its analyzing. And I'll do this a couple of times to kind of get a feel for if we get big fluctuations, but I'll just show you the one result and give you information on it. Same thing goes, we're gonna hop over into PageSpeed Insights. We're gonna do the same in there. We're gonna drop in that URL. We'll analyze this. We'll let that run on as well and check out what we get on the mobile and the desktop scores. A few moments later. So jumping back into GT Metrics to take a look at those scores, you can see we do have a noticeable improvement. We've gone from C with around 66 for performance up to the mid 90s and an A across the board, a sub one second LCP and a total block in time of 78 milliseconds. Minimal cumulative layout shift, which is always good to see. And on our mobile, we're getting 79. So that's already considerably better than we were getting, which is around 33, I believe, when we first test this. Still a little bit of room for improvement, but you know, it's a pretty intense site. Jumping over to the desktop, and that's giving us 92. So all in all, I think we can agree that there's actually pretty decent results without needing to do anything at all other than install the plugin. We can go in and we can tweak a few things from the dashboard itself inside Rabbit Loader, so we could probably customize this a little further if we wanted to. But I think straight out of the box for a lot of people that don't really want to go into the hassle of having to do that, this is pretty respectable. So do I think it's worth grabbing? Well, that's always gonna be up to you. This is a relatively new plugin to market. However, if you do have the cash there to do it, you have 60 days to get your money back if you don't like it as part of AppSumo. I do still think that second tier deal is probably the optimal one where we get unlimited pretty much across the board except for storage. And at $100, that's probably about, well, less than a year's worth of WP Rocket. Take that for what it's worth. So for me, will I be keeping this? Yeah, I probably will be. Will I be using this on mission critical sites? Well, that's something I'd have to test out a little longer to see how real world results come back in to let the data come through this a little bit better and get a better understanding. But first impressions are pretty respectable. But I do think this is something worth checking out. But as always, let me know your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section below. Have you tested it? Would this make you want to consider trying it? Let me know it in those comments. As always, all links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, thank you.